Hello friends, Chris here with ISK Recording. In this video, we're gonna talk about digital audio and what it is. Now, this might seem kind of like boring stuff, but I'm gonna tell you this is really important if you wanna understand what's going on in the digital realm to get maximum fidelity out of your audio recordings. This will help you out a lot. So first off, let's talk about, well, what is digital as opposed to analog? See, analog is anything that isn't digital. Analog audio is waves in the air or it can be um, like a tape, um, the magnetic polarization of a tape. Analog audio is also an electrical current, which is represented by fluctuations of voltage, like we talked about in the last lesson. So how does that turn into digital audio? See, what digital audio is, is it's zeros and ones that go through an algorithm to represent that analog wave, and it's in a way that the computer can read it and understand it and manipulate it. Within your recording chain, there's a part called a converter, and that converts your analog audio into digital, and it also converts your digital audio into analog. So your analog to digital converter is called an AD converter, and your digital to analog converter is called a DA converter. Together, they're called the ADDA. Now most audio interfaces have a built-in converter and you don't realize it's there because it kind of operates in the background and it does its thing and it's all automatic, but some studios will have dedicated hardware that only does conversion. So let's talk a little bit about how the converter works. It takes this incoming sound wave that's an electrical signal and as we talked about in the previous lesson, it's fluctuations of voltage. So this incoming sound wave comes in to the converter as an electrical current and the converter takes samples of what level the voltage is at at any particular given time. Now I'll explain this a little bit better with my fancy diagram. All right, so in this, let's just suppose zero volts right there is in the middle and we're gonna represent zero volts with the number five. Okay, so as the audio signal comes in, remember it's fluctuations of voltage, so the voltage level could be anywhere in here. And as it comes in, it'll hit a certain number and the converter will assign that number to it based on what the voltage is. So if you have a wave coming in and it hits one volt in this particular case, in this diagram, which this is not any accurate numbers, this is just for explaining the concept. But let's say your wave comes in and it hits one volt. So then this will assign a number six to it. And then it goes up and hits two volts. Then we assign the number seven and it goes back down, hits one volt again, it assigns a number six. So as the wave keeps going in, it keeps taking these little snapshots of what the voltage is at, at that exact moment in time. If the wave is coming in and it's in between the six and the seven, what the converter will do is it'll round it off to the nearest one. So since it quite often won't be exactly on the precise value, there will often be rounding up or down to the nearest value. You see, the more values that we have here, then the more precise each sample can be because it doesn't have to round up or down as much. Now, in this example, we have a total of 10 possible spots where it can record the position of a sample. But if there were 20 spots, then our resolution would be doubled. And if there were 100 spots, there'd be 10 times more resolution. So now let's talk real numbers of actual recording gear. What these numbers represent is your bit depth. For instance, if your bit depth were 2-bit, you would have a total of four possibilities where it could place that sample. Because 2 times 2 is 4. If your bit depth were 3-bit, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. So 3-bit audio would have 8 possible locations. Now 8 possible locations is still kind of unrealistic. You wouldn't get any decent audio out of that. But where you do start getting decent audio is when you get up to 16-bit. That's CD quality, and CDs sound pretty good. 16-bit audio is 2 to the power of 16. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, 16 times, which equals 65,536. So in 16-bit audio, there are 65,536 possible places where it can place that sample. And that's quite high resolution. It's easily beyond the capabilities of human hearing. But just to go even farther, most recording is now done in 24-bit. So now we're looking at 2 times 2 times 2, 2 to the power of 24, which equals 16,777,216. So that is literally 256 times more places to put the sample compared to 16-bit. So 24-bit is way more than twice the resolution of 16-bit. It's literally 256 times the resolution of 16-bit. 
So when you're recording in 24-bit, which is usually what you should have your settings set to, you don't have to worry about maximizing your volume and using up the entire bandwidth of what's available. 16-bit has literally less than 1% of the resolution that 24-bit has. So if you're recording in 24-bit and you're only using like even the first 1 or 2% of your available input range, you're still getting higher resolution than 16-bit. So if you were to plot a wave on a graph, there would be an x-axis and a y-axis. So the resolution of the y-axis is represented by the bit depth, and the resolution of the x-axis is represented by your sample rate. See, as I mentioned earlier, it keeps taking these snapshots of where the wave is, but your sample rate is how often it takes these snapshots. A typical sample rate, which is used in a lot of recording studios, and this is also standard for CD, is 44.1 kilohertz. That means it takes 44,100 snapshots snapshots every second. A lot of recording interfaces will offer sample rates at 48 kilohertz, 88.2 kilohertz, 96 kilohertz, 176.4 kilohertz, and 192 kilohertz. 44.1 kilohertz is a standard for CD quality music, and honestly, humans aren't even capable of hearing the detail that you would get recording at higher sample rates. 48 kilohertz is industry standard for audio for film. 88.2 kilohertz is double of 44.1, and 96 kilohertz is double of 48. So sometimes we'll refer to these two sample rates as two times sample rate. The benefit of recording at two times sample rate is, of course, higher resolution, which can maybe give you a very slight increase in sound quality. I'm not too sure if it's even noticeable or not. The downside is, if you're taking samples twice as often, it's going to take up twice as much room on your computer to store that sound file, and it requires twice as much bandwidth to play that sound file. And 192 kilohertz is, in my opinion, completely pointless. As far as a recording studio goes, I can't think of any reason why you would ever use that kind of a sample rate. The only times I could maybe see a justification for using a sample rate like that would be in like scientific measurement with extremely high-end equipment and you're testing sound waves on like bats or something like that. So your bit depth represents how many places there are to store the sample, and your sample rate represents how often these samples are being taken. But there's another element to the sample rate, and that's the clock. Every converter has a built-in clock because it has to take these samples, well, 44,100 times per second. So it needs something to keep that 44,100 times per second, and it needs to be extremely precise. The slightest inconsistencies with the clock can result in noticeable degradation of sound quality. So a lot of effort is put into getting extremely precise clocks in these converters. And when you're working with a larger recording system that has external converters, you need to synchronize the clocks. There's many different ways of synchronizing the clocks, so it depends which digital format you're using, but the most standard way of doing it is using word clock. So you would choose one piece of gear to be the master clock, and the other pieces of gear are the slave clocks, and you'll be sending that master clock signal into the other pieces of gear that are functioning as slave clocks, so the slave clock pieces of gear are basically using the clock from the master, and you would do this using the word clock output. So here I have an 8-channel preamp, and it has built-in analog-to-digital conversion, which it outputs through ADAT. ADAT is an optical output that can transmit digital information. So the way I would use this is here on the back, right there, is an ADAT output. So I would grab my ADAT cable, which is an optical cable called TOSLINK, and I would plug it into there, and go from there into the ADAT input of my interface. And at one time sample rate, so 44.1 or 48 kilohertz, that'll transmit eight channels of digital audio into my interface. But it won't synchronize the clock. In order to synchronize the clock, I would need to use this fancy word clock cable. So the way I would hook this up, I would have to choose which one is going to be the master clock, my interface or this converter. So if I chose my interface to be the master clock, I would connect this into the word clock output of the interface and then connect the other end into right here. It says word clock in. So that just plugs in like there. Give it a little twist. And there we go. And then on the front of the unit, I would set it to external clock, which is this button right there. Now, if I wanted to do it the other way around and use this as my master clock and slave my interface off of it, then what I would do is use this button, sample rate, and I could select, in this case, 32 kilohertz, 44.1 kilohertz, or 48 kilohertz. And I would use the word clock output from here and plug that into the word clock input on the interface. And then within the interface software, I would need to choose my clock as word clock input. 
So hopefully now you understand what digital audio is. It was a little bit difficult for me to explain, so if things didn't make sense or if you still just don't quite get it, please feel free to ask any questions you like in the comments section down below. I'll do the best that I can to answer them. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please do me a big favor. High five that like button down there and go and have an awesome day.